Based on her talent or based on just her moves she made? Because she wasn't a Based on her handicap. What's that? Being a plant. Mm. Marrying Biggie to keep him away from Kim so that they couldn't take over the power structure. So when Puff say I'm obsessed with talking about Puff and telling y'all the truth, telling y'all the truth, who was obsessed with who? Exactly. First of all, bro, we're going to talk about, you know what I mean? Because Pac was a man, man. Like, I, I, I lived in the same house. It was nothing about Pac. You understand? He was a man-man. So, we've all heard about the beef and animosity that existed between Diddy and Tupac, right? I mean, it was legendary. There were even those wild rumors about Diddy being involved in Tupac's untimely demise. But here's the kicker. New sources have come out revealing that there was a lot more to their relationship than anyone really knew. It turns out Diddy had this really strange obsession with Tupac. Sure, a lot of people today might say they're obsessed with Tupac, because, let's be honest, the guy became an icon early on. But Diddy's obsession? That seemed to be built on something way darker. Let's start with what Jaguar Wright had to say. According to her, Faith Evans was basically a plant for Diddy. He allegedly forced her to get close to Tupac, probably to spy on him. Forcing her to interact with Tupac, even though that's where she would have preferred to be. And it didn't stop there. Diddy also used Faith to lure Biggie away from Lil' Kim, ensuring they didn't team up and take over the power structure Diddy was trying so hard to dominate. Can you imagine the level of manipulation going on behind the scenes? Based on her talent or based on just her moves she made? Because she wasn't a Based on her handicap. What's that? Being a plant. Mm. Marrying Biggie to keep him away from Kim so that they couldn't take over the power structure. And then there's Gene Deal's account. Deal who used to work closely with Diddy, painted a picture of a man who wanted everything Tupac had and went out of his way to get it. Starting with the basics, Deal mentioned that Tupac once got this yellow Versace shirt that everyone loved. Not long after, Diddy shows up wearing the exact same shirt. Pac was the first one on the scene wearing Versace shirts. He went and got the same Versace shirts Pac had. It wasn't just a one-off thing either. Diddy seemed to be constantly copying Tupac's style and swagger. Now, if you think fashion is where it stops, you're mistaken. Diddy also seemed to have a habit of appropriating Tupac's words and ideas. For instance, at the 2022 Grammy Awards, Diddy gave this powerful speech about how black people hold the key to controlling the direction of the entertainment industry, from the kinds of films being made to setting fashion trends. It was a headline-making moment, no doubt. But here's the thing. Tupac had already said the exact same thing in an interview while he was still alive. Our power line, that, that's what as I'm far thinking. as fashion, it's yeah. the young yeah. As far as the words, slang, the movies, what's hot, it's the young yeah. We control that. We control what, what's cool. We control what's hot. We control what your kids listen to, what they dance to. We control what's a video game. We control what they dance to. We control everything. I mean, come on. If you're going to lift someone's words verbatim, at least give them some credit, right? So, once might have been a coincidence, but blatantly copying Tupac twice? That's starting to look like a pattern for Diddy. And it doesn't even end there. The clearest sign that Diddy had this odd obsession with Tupac is how he went after almost every woman who had been with Tupac while he was alive. He was knocking down all the women that he thought Pac was knocking down. And what I mean is, have it. According to Gene Deal, Diddy's relationship with Sarah Chapman is a prime example. I can't say why he got with her, but it's evident everybody knew Sarah was with Pac first. She was actually with Puff Man first. Sarah Chapman, who later became one of Diddy's baby mamas, might not have had the love story most people think. Diddy and Chapman, a businesswoman, never officially said they dated, but they were friends for years. They welcomed a child, Chance, together while Diddy was still in a relationship with Kim Porter. Despite the rocky start, Diddy has remained close to Chapman as they raised Chance together, and he regularly posts about how grateful he is for her. For her birthday in September 2023, Diddy posted a tribute on Instagram saying, Thank God for you every day. We are so grateful to have you in our lives. Love you. It sounds sweet, almost like a fairy tale, but there's more to the story. Before Chapman became Diddy's baby mama, she had a thing with Tupac. There's not a lot of information about their relationship, but several photographs from November 1995 tell the story. 
These photos, taken a month after Tupac got out of jail, surfaced in 2012. They showed Tupac and Chapman on vacation in Hawaii, hinting at a brief romance. Word on the street is that one of the main reasons Diddy got with Chapman was because she had been with Tupac. It seems like he wanted to repeat his obviously very toxic pattern, and it doesn't stop there. Diddy supposedly got together with Kim Porter because she also liked Tupac. Kim had a history of posting a lot of Tupac's pictures on her Instagram before her death. She was even seen wearing a Tupac shirt on the red carpet with Diddy. And Kim had an obsession or liked Pac so much, she on a red carpet with Tupac's shirt on. Also, besides seemingly trying to become Tupac by going after the women the Harlem rapper got with, Diddy actually tried to become him in a movie once. According to Gene Deal, Diddy started taking acting classes right after Tupac revealed that he wanted to venture into filmmaking. The only problem was that Diddy took it way too far. Nobody know why, but Puff had an obsession with him for whatever reason it was, because he started wanting to act. See, Tupac received a ton of praise for his breakout film Juice, in which he played a Harlem teenager named Roland Bishop, who pushed his group of friends into committing serious crimes before turning on each member of the crew. This role was a game changer for Tupac, showcasing his dynamic acting skills and earning him significant recognition. Shortly after, it was revealed that Sean Diddy Combs wanted that role and tried to get it even after Tupac had already been cast. But there's a backstory that makes this even more interesting. When Tupac auditioned for the role of Bishop, producer Neil Moritz had never heard of him or knew that he attended the Baltimore School for the Arts, but he had him try out anyway. He was dynamic, bold, powerful, magnetic, any word you want to use, Moritz told Kathy Scott, author of The King of Tupac Shakur. Tupac was it. We cast him right on the spot. His performance was so compelling that it was impossible to imagine anyone else in the role. During an Instagram Live conversation with rapper Fat Joe, McDaniels recalled, When we shot Juice, Andre Harrell was shooting a movie that Puff was working on. Puff got fired from that movie and he said, Ralph, you working on Juice? I want to be Bishop. I saw the script. Bishop, that's me. And I was like, but we got somebody to be Bishop already. The only one that's cast is Tupac. Diddy was like, nah, I'm from Harlem, Ralph. Just think about it. Think about it. The script, that's me. McDaniels said he went to the film's producers about giving Diddy a chance to audition. However, because Diddy had a reputation and a history of being fired from other productions, they refused to give him a shot. Now, here's another alleged angle about Diddy's obsession with Pac. Some folks think Diddy got the idea that Tupac was gay, and all of his weird actions were just to get Tupac's attention. Back then, there were tons of rumors about Tupac being gay, especially due to Quincy Jones's allegations. Now, if you're even a little into Hollywood vibes, you've got to know Quincy Jones. He's the real deal. Legendary producer, musician, songwriter, the whole shebang. They even call him the black godfather of the industry, and for good reason. Quincy's track record is a who's who of the music scene. Frank Sinatra, Aretha Franklin, Rufus and Chaka Khan, and the king himself, Michael Jackson. But Quincy wasn't just making headlines for his music magic. There's something about him that's kept him in the spotlight for decades. There's always been speculation about Quincy's SEX preferences, with some wild claims that he sort of nudged guys into gay relationships to boost their Hollywood game. The list of supposed flings linked to Quincy is like an endless scroll. But if we're talking about the juiciest bits, two names always take the spotlight in Quincy Jones's romantic saga. None other than Tupac and the Fresh Prince himself, Will Smith. Word on the street is that Quincy Jones might have pushed them into his own version of Hollywood sleepovers. It's this kind of murky connection with Quincy that apparently left a mark, with whispers that he was trying to, you know, share his preferences. Now, flashback to this interview with Tupac, where he spilled the beans, claiming Quincy popped the question about some intimate backside matters. But here's where it gets wild. That interview? It's gone from the entire internet. Like, vanished. Conspiracy or not, it takes some serious clout to wipe out a chat like that. And since Tupac's not around to give us the 411, Quincy seems to have pulled a Houdini on the whole situation, leaving us to connect the dots. 
Even Napoleon, when grilled about the supposed link between Tupac and Quincy, straight up shut it down in an interview. Dude denied the whole shebang and went into full-on defense mode for Jones. But you know how it goes. Some folks out there still have a memory like a steel trap, and they're holding on to every word Tupac spilled in that interview, no matter how hard anyone tries to sweep it under the Hollywood rug. And this is not the first time Tupac expressed his frustration with Quincy about his nasty actions back in the day. Tupac didn't hold back on venting about a bunch of folks in an interview, and Quincy Jones was on the receiving end of some seriously bold remarks. Considering how tight Tupac and Quincy were during Tupac's career, there's speculation that Quincy might have tried pulling some moves on him. They were so chummy that Tupac was even thinking about ditching Death Row Records for Quincy's label before his untimely exit. Besides the whole rumor with Quincy Jones, even Queen Latifah revealed in an interview that she and Tupac used to go to gay clubs together and they usually had a lot of fun there. Um, at this cool gay club in San Francisco. I was like, yo, I'm here. He's like, yo, I'm gonna hook up with you. So Tupac came to the club with me and I was like, yo, come on, Tupac is in the building. They went crazy in there. <laughs> then there's his iconic bathtub photo shoot taken by the renowned photographer David LaChapelle, who is openly gay. Although Napoleon shut down these rumors and defended Pac by saying he wasn't gay, all these instances fueled the gossip mill. Exactly. First of all, bro, we're going to talk about, you know what I mean? Because Pac was a man-man. Like, I, I, I lived in the same house. It was nothing about Pac. You understand? He was a man-man. Rumors circulated that maybe Diddy was confused, thinking Pac rolled like that and decided to make an advance, spiraling into an obsession. I mean... Diddy being gay isn't exactly a secret anymore, although he has denied it several times. But his actions tell a different story, like how he tried to lure Columbus Short to a hotel in the middle of the night. For those who don't know, Columbus Short recently shared a video claiming Diddy tried to get him to come to his hotel room at 3 a.m. In the video, he straight up said Diddy tried to pull him into a late night hotel room situation at 3 a.m. Columbus wasn't about to keep quiet about it either. He's like, I'm snitching. I'm snitching in the kitchen. I'm snitching. I'm snitching in the kitchen. Diddy. Gotta tell on him. He, he tried it on me. So I know it's true. Columbus shared the story, saying he got a random call from Diddy in the middle of the night when he was still married. Diddy was all, why weren't you at the BET Awards? Columbus, being a married man and all, was like, uh, I'm in bed with my wife, man. Diddy, unfazed, dropped the bomb that he was at the Beverly Hills Hotel, just chilling solo. Then there's Usher. Back in the 90s, Diddy ran this thing called Puffy Flavor Camp. It was basically a deal for young, up-and-coming stars to get some mentorship from him. And the stories these celebs spill about their time in Puffy Flavor Camp are jaw-dropping. One of the kids who got a taste of this flavor camp was Usher. Usher was set to be an R&B sensation from a super young age. He spilled the beans in 2016, telling Howard Stern that he really got a grip on what being famous meant after spending a year living with Puff Daddy when he was just 14. I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it, Usher said during his first Stern Show interview. We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's Camp. That's what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's going to In the 90s. Do you understand what that's like? But did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was <laughs> and it was but I don't know if could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. So, Usher's one-of-a-kind learning experience, known as Puffy Flavor Camp, happened because a young Usher wowed music bigwig L.A. Reid with his musical skills. Next thing you know, he's jetting off to New York to crash with Puffy during the golden era of Bad Boy Records, all in the name of getting the real deal scoop on making it big in the music scene. It was pretty wild. It was crazy, Usher said, while rattling off some of the biggest names in hip-hop who were a constant presence at Puffy's house, including Notorious B.I.G., Lil' Kim, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, and Craig Mack. I was like the little brother. They called me Baby Boo, Usher spilled. But Howard was curious if there were any ground rules for him since, you know, he was just a kid. 
He wasn't disciplinary, he was letting me be a young man, Usher shared with Howard. Even though he wasn't hitting the books in a regular school, they had a tutor around. And about that cash flow, Usher said he got a per diem, but just enough to keep him out of too much mischief. When asked if he'd send his kids to Diddy's camp, he was like, hell no. So you can imagine just how messy things must have been. What like a, a life. Living. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> hell <laughs> no. Gene Deal, who seems to know a lot about the inner workings of that circle, has even said that Usher's experience was way darker than most people realize. He hinted that Usher might have gone through similar that Cassie endured with Diddy, even suggesting that it got so bad at one point that Usher ended up in the hospital. And it doesn't stop there. Gene Deal also spilled the beans on something he called a S cult that Diddy was supposedly running, which he said included both Usher and Justin Bieber. The stuff he described about this group was downright disturbing. Puffin Usher. pretty intense about Usher, suggesting he might have a trauma bond with Diddy due to some pretty heavy stuff that went down between them. This idea isn't far-fetched when you look at how Usher talks about Diddy. It's like he's always treading lightly, picking his words super carefully to avoid letting something slip that might stir up more rumors or controversy. Although Usher has never directly addressed the whispers about being Diddy's boy toy, some details that came out in the Lil Rod lawsuit kind of paint that picture. According to the lawsuit, Diddy was pretty open about his intimate history with some big names in the industry, including a rapper and an R&B singer. The lawsuit didn't name names directly, but fans were quick to connect the dots using clues like one being a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj, and another who performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residence. Pretty quickly, people figured out they were talking about Meek Mill and Usher. But apart from the fact that Usher has talked about how wild his experience at Puffy Flavor Camp was, Diddy himself once made a comment about how he and Usher used to sleep in the same bed when he was still a minor. Though he tried to brush it off as a silly fight over Frosted Flakes, and Kevin Hart jumped in trying to lighten the mood, the statement didn't really sit right with a lot of people. It's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and... I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's not, I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes. So it's kind of understandable why Usher might seem to cover for Diddy, considering how trauma can really mess with your head. And Usher isn't the only one who seems to be under some kind of strange influence from Diddy. Meek Mill has also been acting out online, especially after he was accused of being another one of Diddy's boy toys. As you all know, Meek Mill was named in the Lil Rod lawsuit as the rapper who Diddy has allegedly had intercourse with. Jaguar Wright talked about Diddy in her recent interview with Storm Monroe, hinting she's sure he's given that behind up many times for the diddler. She even called Meek a power bottom. I knew, I knew Meek was power bottom. Wow. Well, he already done got the broke in. I just didn't know that that's why he was faking it with Nicki. But this is not the first time Jaguar has talked about Meek Mill being passed around in the industry. In an interview with Real Life Productions, she said Meek Mill might have been used by the Smiths when he went to them for mentorship. By well, they do weird things in their house, and young men have left their house screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Meek Mill. Is anyone surprised that Will and Jada are close friends with Diddy? I mean, if Meek Mill was Diddy's side piece, he definitely could have borrowed him to the Smiths if they wanted some fresh cheeks to spread. And with all the drama around Diddy lately, old pics and clips of Meek Mill are popping up again, sparking a whole lot of chatter. Like, there's this photo floating around of Meek Mill and Diddy in matching pajamas, which kind of makes you wonder if they were having cozy sleepovers. Then there's this clip where Diddy calls Meek Daddy, and I mean, hearing two grown men call each other that isn't your everyday buddy-buddy talk. Even more intriguing is this video from a club where Meek Mill is performing, and Diddy just snaps his head around when Meek drops some lyrics. It looked like Diddy was hit by some intense memories or something right then.
Now, Meek has been pretty vocal, trying to squash rumors about his SEX preference. The guy practically lived on Twitter for a week straight, posting about how much he's into women. But interestingly, he never outright denied the buzz about him being Diddy's so-called boy toy. There's also Justin Bieber. Last year, Justin Bieber started making headlines again after Cassie's lawsuit came out, and that lawsuit really started unraveling some dark stuff about Diddy. Initially, it seemed like maybe people were overreacting about how toxic things could have been for Justin around Diddy. But now, with all this new info, it's hard to deny that something really sketchy was going on. Enter Jaguar Wright, who shed some light on this in her latest interview with Storm Monroe. She talked about that unsettling video where Justin is seen with Odell Beckham and Trey Songs. In the video, it kind of looks like Justin might be doing something pretty compromising with Odell, like going down on him. Some fans tried to brush it off, saying maybe Justin was just high on which is still pretty bad because it's these older guys encouraging a younger guy into that lifestyle. But Jaguar set the record straight. It wasn't just some thing. She said it was exactly what it looked like Justin was doing. And she pointed out Justin's noticeably wet mouth at the end of that clip as proof that it wasn't innocent at all. And it looked like Justin Bieber might not have been into what was going on, because Jaguar Wright mentioned that Trey Songs was basically playing lookout, making sure no one, especially the paparazzi, caught what was happening with Odell Beckham and Justin. It's a pretty twisted setup when you think about it. And then I think about that really disturbing footage of Bieber, Odell Beckham, and Trey Songs. Yes. And Trey's like literally sitting there playing lookout. Playing lookout as Justin Bieber goes down on Odell. The boy came up with his mouth wet. According to Jaguar, this downward spiral for Justin probably started after he spent those infamous 48 hours with Diddy. Remember that footage where Diddy's promising Justin a Lamborghini and a house during their staycation? Now that we know more about Diddy, that video just gives people the creeps. It's hard to watch without imagining what Justin had to endure under the guise of Diddy's mentorship. And yes, Diddy did end up giving Justin that Lamborghini. Like, as soon as Justin got his driver's license, he was seen driving a Lambo that looked just like the one Diddy talked about giving him. If Diddy didn't give it to him, then that's one heck of a coincidence, right? But here's the thing. Why would Diddy give such an extravagant gift to a young artist out of the blue? A lot of folks think Diddy was playing the role of a sugar daddy, lavishing expensive gifts on Justin in return for some favors. But yeah, yeah, the keys is yours. You're 16. You're right. good to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. Then, when you get 18, you get the house. But for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and, and, and we're going to go full, up full crazy. We're going crazy. Crazy. After hearing about all the terrible things Diddy allegedly did to Cassie, detailed in her lawsuit, and what Lil Rod has claimed, it seems like Justin Bieber might have had it even worse because he was so young when he got involved with Diddy. You can see the difference if you look at a video of Justin from back then, so young and innocent, compared to how he appeared just a few years later. It's clear he went through a lot. But it's kind of wild that people are only starting to piece things together now, even though the red flags were there the whole time. There's this one clip where Justin is visibly nervous while talking to Diddy, stumbling over his words because Diddy caught him off guard. The rumor is that Justin's team had been keeping him away from Diddy for a bit because they thought Diddy was a bad influence and was messing with Justin's health, both mentally and physically. So, when Diddy showed up out of the blue, ready to dive back into their old dynamics, things got super tense. There's also this other video where it looks like Diddy is patting Justin down, maybe to check if he was wearing a wire, which is just bizarre. Whatever Diddy whispered to Justin at the end, it left Justin ending the meeting with a love you. Another thing people often overlooked was how Justin Bieber's problems with and other substances seemed to escalate after he started hanging out with Diddy. Take the 2014 Cyrock party Diddy threw, where Justin was seen holding a bottle that was supposed to be Aqua Hydrate, a brand of water. But if you took a closer look, the liquid in the bottle Justin had was suspiciously yellow, hinting it might not have been water after all, possibly or something else. 
Years down the line, Justin openly shared how tough that period was for him. He was hurting, unhappy, confused, and even felt angry at God. It's a stark contrast to the image of him living it up at the height of his career. Despite the flashy lifestyle, Justin was struggling with some deep issues. Like this one time on Ellen DeGeneres' show, she actually showed this super revealing paparazzi photo of Justin and then threw some pretty awkward questions his way. It just wasn't cool, especially considering his age at the time. You just brought a friend to Bora Bora? Yeah. And you're just with your friend? Why are you putting me on the spot like this? Gosh. I mean, you can say, why can't you say you're dating somebody? I'm not dating anyone, though. She's just a friend? Back in 2011, when Justin was just 16, he had this weird interview with James Corden at the Brit Awards. Corden was just acting all strange around him. Can I say this? Lean into me again. You smell amazing. How old are you? Oh, uh, thank you. How old are you? I'm 16. I'll be 17 in, like, two weeks. Fast forward a bit, and at the 2012 American Music Awards, there was this moment with Jenny McCarthy that was just uncomfortable. Justin was barely 18, and Jenny, who was 40 at the time, was all over him. He literally had to pull away from her, and he even started his acceptance speech by saying, Wow, I feel so violated right now. It just shows how awkward and out of place that whole scenario was. And it's not just those incidents. There was another time when an interviewer was asking 15-year-old Justin some really inappropriate questions about the talk. Justin even had to call them out on it, like, why would you ask a kid those kinds of things? Okay, so why don't you give me I, I, really, I feel uncomfortable right now. Oh. Why do you want to know from a 15-year-old boy, that's pretty weird. And here's Katy Perry just feeling Justin up. Who apparently wanted to know what a Bieber felt like. Justin Bieber has really been through the ringer in this industry. The fact that he managed to navigate through those dark times is almost miraculous. And while all this was happening, the very people who should have been his protectors, like Diddy, weren't really stepping up. In fact, it often seemed like they were part of the problem. Well, it seems Tupac wasn't the only artist Diddy was obsessed with, and unfortunately, some did fall victim to it. Let us know what you think of all this in the comments below, and we'll catch you in the next video.